With the Endepend Visual Studio extension, the code structure can be explored through both the dependency graph and the dependency matrix. In the graph video, we saw that the Endepend graph can be used in a number of scenarios, like here to browse the assembly's dependencies. However, when viewing too large a code structure, like these 116 namespaces, the graph is not the right visualization tool anymore. That is why Endepend suggests to visualize such a structure with a dependency matrix instead. Here, both rows and columns represent the same set of namespaces. Non-empty cells represent dependencies. When hovering over a blue cell, an arrow indicates that the column namespace uses the row namespace. Green cells and blue cells are symmetric, because when a blue cell means that A is using B, the symmetric green cell means that B is used by A. A black cell represents two namespaces mutually dependent. And a red square over several rows and columns means that all namespaces involved are in a dependency cycle. Clicking such a red square shows the cycle through a graph. And indeed, any namespace here is directly or indirectly relying on all other ones. The matrix naturally pinpoints non-obvious patterns like those cycles. And when there is no cycle, it means that the code is well-layered, like this assembly set. A row with many blue cells means that the related element is used by many other elements. MS Core Lib, for example, is used by all application assemblies since it contains all base classes like string or object. The same way a blue column, like here, means that this assembly is relying on all those third-party assemblies. The numbers on cells are the numbers of methods and fields involved in the coupling between the two assemblies. We can change this setting to the number of type, for example. When hovering over a cell, a tooltip explains the coupling in terms of types involved. You can either dig into this coupling through a graph, or through a matrix. Again, this matrix is symmetric because the matrix headers are bound with this option. To visualize 10 types using 29 other types, the matrix doesn't have to be symmetric, so let's unbind the headers and generate the coupling matrix again. Now, facts like eye test result being used a lot or test runner using many types become obvious. The matrix and graph can even be used side by side to clarify the situation. The matrix can also be used to show indirect dependencies. Now the cell weight is the usage depth, one for a direct usage and more than one for an indirect usage. Clicking this cell with a weight of 4 exhibits a path graph of depth 4 from the class Result Summary to the class Node List. Finally, let's go back to the namespace matrix. Let's dig into a black cell, which represents two namespaces mutually dependent here. Often you'll see more blue cells than green cells, or the opposite. This is because developers naturally care for code layering. Most of the time, we avoid calling a high-level component from a low-level component. Here, you just need to refactor the code to make sure that Test Engine is not calling Master Test Runner to get layered code. Let's mention that in the architecture category, some code rules are catching those sort of layering problems. In this video, we presented how the dependency matrix can be used to explore the code organization in a number of situations. At first glance, the matrix is less intuitive than the graph, but it has two key benefits. First, it can scale over a very large structure. Second, it naturally pinpoints non-obvious patterns like cycles, layered code, or popular code elements.